the book of Proverbs at chapter number two. Again, I want to talk about wisdom that works. Wisdom that works. Proverbs at chapter number two. <clears throat> My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding, yea, if thou criest after knowledge and lifted up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. When wisdom entereth into thine heart and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee understanding shall keep thee to deliver thee from the way of the evil man from the man that speaketh forward things who leave the path of righteousness to walk in the ways of darkness who rejoice to do evil and delight in the forwardness of the wicked whose ways are crooked and they are forward in their paths to deliver thee from the strange woman even from the stranger which flattereth with her words which forsaketh the guide of her youth and forgetteth the covenant of her God. For her house inclineth unto death and her paths unto the dead. None that go unto her return again, neither take they hold of the paths of life, that thou mayest walk in the way of the good men and keep the paths of the righteous. For the upright shall dwell in the land and the perfect shall remain in it. Verse 22 reads, But the wicked, shall be cut off from the earth and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. Thank you. You may be seated. The grass withers and the flower thereof fadeth away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Wisdom that works. You don't have to hate Jesus to go to hell. You can go to hell thinking you're pretty good. Thinking you don't need a savior. Thinking that your life is pretty good and you're doing well. You don't despise the church. You have nothing against God. You, you're not against Jesus. You just don't think you need it. You just think your life is fine the way it is. I did a funeral not long ago of a man who had it all together. He had money. He had a yacht. He had a sailboat in, in Bimini. He was well respected on his job, beautiful house with a wine cellar, nice place, uh, stocks, he had bonds, he was really living life, just 60 years old, and things should have been turning out real well for him, his investments were beginning to mature, and life was just beginning to get on an even keel when he was stricken with cancer. And I slept in their home and tried to talk with him about the things of God. He wanted to know about God and about church and about what's going to happen when he dies. But he was too weak to sit up and talk with me. And all of his bonds, all of his stocks, all of his sailboat, none of that came up in conversation. Because when you come to the end of your journey, the question will not be how many hours did you spend at the office. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and then lose his soul? 
There are only two kinds of people in the world. There are people who say to God, let your will be done. And there are people to whom God says, no, let your will be done. God will not fight with you for control of your life because the door to your heart opens from the inside. God will not struggle with you and fight with you to take control. You have to open the door and let him come in. And then if you refuse, if you don't let him come in, there's a word I tried to say to us on last Sunday that he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can even ask or think that's positive and negative. The positive is if you invite God into your life, he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think. But if you invite God out of your life, he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think to stay out of your affairs. God will not tear down your resistance. God will not break down the door to your heart. You have to invite him in. And so the preacher Solomon tells us this morning that wisdom can be renewed in God. We can be renewed in God. Uh, all of us want change at one time or another. Uh, we, are, we want to lose weight or we want to exercise or we want to get more strict uh, with our diet or we want to make sure that we keep our regularly scheduled doctor's appointments or we want to make sure that we study harder or do whatever it is that we want to have some measure of success in. We give it our best effort because we want a good result. And in order to get that good result, you have to make some changes and nobody likes change but a baby. Somebody gonna get that on the way to Lubis. <laughs> the only person here who likes to be changed is a baby. The rest of us say we want to change and do the same thing over and over and over and expect different results. Which is really the definition of insanity to keep on doing the same thing over and over and expecting something different to happen. Here Solomon the preacher tells us that if you would seek godly wisdom you can be renewed in God. But first of all, you've got to get real with God. You've got to get real with God. Look at verses 1 through 4. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding, yea, if thou criest after knowledge and lifted up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her, as silver and searches for her as for hid treasures. There's this word that keeps coming up, if. You can have it, if. It's yours, but you gotta meet the condition. It's, it's, it's available to you if you meet certain requirements. If, then. It's right here in the text. If you do what God just got through saying, verse 5 says, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord. You have to get real with God. And when you decide to get real with God about what's really going on, then God will get real with you. Look at verses 5 through 8. Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He lays up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keeps the paths of judgment and preserves the ways of his saints. If you keep God's commandments, then God will bless you with good success. It does not come because you go to church. It does not come because your father was a deacon. It does not come because you were raised in a Christian home. It does not come because you have money in the bank or college degrees. It comes if you seek godly wisdom. And the wisdom of God is available if you walk upright. Brothers and sisters, I want to impress on us that good sense doesn't come to you early. 
you have to live a while. And some of us who have made some mistakes, some mistakes that we regret. Come on, help me preach a minute. You don't mind testifying right now that if I had known then what I know now, I could have avoided a whole lot of foolish mistakes. Getting with the wrong crowd, listening to bad advice, trying to be like somebody else, spending money on things you can't afford, trying to impress people that you don't even like, getting in the way with people who are not going anywhere fast. If you could have listened to somebody who was giving you godly counsel, you would have avoided foolish mistakes. I think I need to help us that you don't get this in your teens and, and in your 20s because you don't really start learning some sense until you turn 35 or 40. Uh, and, and once you get in that age, and especially when you're 16, 70, and 80, you don't care what nobody thinks about you. you you're not bothered about what anybody feels about you. You say whatever comes in your mind, whether they like it or not. Because you're old enough now to tell somebody who's fat, you fat. Tell somebody what they got on don't look good on them and they, they can't say anything to you because you're 85. And they think you got dementia so you can say whatever you want to say. But I believe you have to live a while before you can have good sense. Paul says, I've learned that in whatsoever state I find myself in, to be content. You have to live a while to be satisfied with what you have, to be thankful for what God has given you, to be grateful that God has blessed you in spite of your foolish errors. When I look back over my life, I need somebody to help me testify and see how far God has brought me in spite of my problems. In spite of my issues, in spite of the mistakes I've made, in spite of the stuff I should have done but didn't do, God loves me faithfully. When, when you get real with God, and stop blaming your principal and stop blaming the white man and stop blaming the society. Not my brother. Not my sister, but it's me, oh Lord. You ever got a witness here? I'm standing in the need of prayer. I need mercy. I need grace. I came to church this morning not to preach primarily, but to ask God for more mercy, for more grace, for more power, because I can't walk uprightly until he fills me with his Holy Spirit. Now to some of you who don't need that, I'm not talking to you. You go right back to sleep. To some of you who don't need mercy, you just go right on back to sleep. I'm not talking to you. You just, you just, you just wait till I get to where you are. But to those of us who've got some stuff we shame to talk about, some decisions we wish we hadn't made, some roads we wish we hadn't traveled and God still gave us a break? God still gave you a chance? God still woke you up this morning? You did enough to be in your grave. Uh, get real with God. If you do that, then God will do this. If you keep your end, then God will keep his end. God is predisposed to bless your life. But he won't do it if you don't walk upright. And, and listen, even if you fail, 
you ought to fail trying. Even if you mess up, even if you make a mistake, you ought to mean to do what's right. Have I got a witness here? And listen, brothers and sisters, there's some folk you got to dismiss out of your life. Because they ain't going nowhere. They don't want to see you go anywhere. Misery. Yeah, yeah, you got it. They don't want nothing. They don't want to see you with nothing. Every day, every day, I go outside my house. I got to pick up Popeye's chicken boxes, beer can. It ain't even my kind of beer. I mean, I wouldn't mind it if it was my brand. But I'm trying to live in the hood. You know, I'm trying to live with my peeps. But they ain't treating me right. I mean, I try to keep my house up, keep my yard up, and I got to go pick up their paper and their trash. They ain't going nowhere. They don't want you to go nowhere. They don't have anything. They don't want you to have anything. But you can't stop God from blessing somebody when God has chosen to bless somebody. Your getting mad with them ain't going to stop God from blessing them. You might as well get with them and learn why, how they got where they are and you will be twice further if you just had the wisdom to talk with somebody who's on the Lord's side. Don't, 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 don't take advice from people who ain't got no husband. <laughs> Telling you what you ought to do with yours. No, 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 that's, that's like a bald-headed man trying to tell you how to comb your hair. He's, he's out of his element. There, there are several things I don't do. I don't argue politics with people who don't vote. I don't argue child rearing with people who don't have children. And I don't argue the Bible with people who don't go to church. Because you have no frame of reference for any of those things that I just got through mentioning. If you don't vote, you ain't got no business arguing about the system. Talk back to me if you can. If you have no children, don't tell me nothing about whipping children. Because if my mama had been alive when the CPS was uh, putting people in jail, Adrian Peterson ain't got nothing on Lena Anderson. My mama would be the poster child for standing before the district attorney and the judge for whip. She knew how to whip children so well that other people sent their children to our house for my mama to whip them. Talk back to me if you can. And folk who don't go to church don't ask me anything about the Bible because if you don't love God like I love God, we have nothing to talk about except you need to be saved. Wisdom is wasted on a fool. The Bible says it's like putting a gold ring in a pig's snout. He has no appreciation for it. No appreciation for it. Wisdom is wasted on a fool. You're looking at these Hollywood people and and these celebrities and movie stars as your example. What good, the scripture says, is money in the hands of a fool? Without God, I don't care how well you can sing or dance. I don't care how well you can throw a football or bounce a basketball. Without God, you're lost and on your way to hell. Now you, 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 you notice this. Those of you who are raising young children, they are now, if they're in sporting events, they are now beginning to put all of these sports activities on Sunday. Uh, uh, track and volleyball and, and soccer and football and t-ball, all of the tournaments are on Sunday. 
cheerleading tournaments and clinics and all of those things happen on Sunday and that's not accidental. It's because those people don't go to church. And here you are a Christian following an unbeliever to their activities and they are dragging you away from God and the more you stay away from church, the easier it gets to stay away from church. I wish I had somebody to help me preach. And so you cast your lots in with them thinking your child going to make it in the NBA or the NFL and they are nothing now but athletic sinners and cultured idiots because they have no knowledge of Jesus Christ. Because when the bottom falls out, you don't need a coach. You need a savior. When life turns on you, you won't need a ticket to the Toyota Center. You'll need a seat in the church house because God knows how to get your attention. Uh, you can be renewed. You can be born again. But you've got to come up to God's standards. Because God will not lower the standards because it's 2014. What, what I think, and, and, and I don't know if I'm going to have the nerve to do this. And I got a lot of nerve, but I don't think I, I'm going to have the nerve yet to do this. I think we need to have BTU again. To train people how to even sit in church how to act in the Lord's house. We just get folk off the street and turn them into officers and, and secretaries and presidents and they just got out the world and they come into church and know nothing about what the church ought to be doing and because they look like a deacon or they sound like they can teach Sunday school, we put them in positions of authority but they are novices and know nothing about the things of God. See how quiet you got right there? I think we need to train people how to worship, how to dress to come to church, how to act in the house of God. This is not a social club. Um, this is not your clubhouse. This is not some civic auditorium. This is the house of the living God. Isaiah gets so straight with that situation. He says it was in the year. I need two or three more Bible reading. That King Isaiah died. I saw also the Lord. Here it is. High and lifted up. His train, I wish I had a witness, filled the temple. And in his presence, the house was filled with smoke. Seraphim covered their face, covered their feet, because the presence of God Almighty was too bright for even heavenly beings to look in his face. And when you come in this house, put your ego in the car. Because there is nobody like Jesus. But, but, but here's what I want to get to talking about Isaiah. Isaiah said, at the voice of him that cried, not only was the house filled with smoke, but Isaiah said, the doorposts, that's where I'm trying to go, moved. Doorposts came up out of the floor and moved shouted inanimate wooden objects saw God and moved pieces of a tree a doorpost saw God and got happy no soul no brain just a piece of wood in the presence of God started shouting 
And here you've been sitting in this church since 11 o'clock. He woke you up this morning, put food on your table, gave you health and strength, gave you eyes to see and legs to walk. And all that God has done for you, you haven't opened your mouth yet? I think I ought to say it right here, let the redeem. I said, let the redeem. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You can be renewed if you get real with God. If you get real with God, then God will get real with you. And verses 9, 10, and 11 says, you can change. Then shall thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. When wisdom entereth into thine heart and knowledge is pleasant unto your soul, discretion shall preserve you, understanding shall keep you. When you start walking right, you can't be easily fooled. Somebody ought to help me preach it. You, you can't be led along the way by the Jim Joneses of life. People can't tell you anything. When, when you start walking uprightly and seeking godly wisdom, everybody can't preach to you. You can't follow after all kinds of doctrine and, and all kinds of foolishness because once you know the truth, the truth will set you free. Have I got a witness? And the Bible says, whom the Son has set free. He is free indeed. You'll have discretion. You will, you will have deep understanding. And both these, discretion and understanding, will keep you. Then as I heard to the close, not only can you be renewed in God, but you can be protected from this world. Verses 12 through verse number 15. He will deliver thee from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaketh forward things, who leave the path of righteousness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoices to do evil and delight in the forwardness of the wicked, whose ways are crooked and they are forward in their path. God will keep you from men with deceitful speech. Deceitful speech. A perverse conversation. Uh, not, not just, not just uh, 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 dirty jokes and, and not just cuss words, but you can use good words to mislead people. But when you walk uprightly, God will keep you from being deceived. The scripture says in the New Testament that you'll be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. God will show you some things that other folk can't see. He'll let you hear some things that other folk can't hear. And folk will marvel at how much discernment you have. Our old folks, our old grandparents didn't know what discernment was. They called it mother wit. Yeah, I wish I had somebody who was raised like I was raised. Uh, they, they, they had mother wit. It was discernment. It was spiritual discernment. But they could see way down the road because even though they did not have education, God gave them something that you can't learn in school. When you, when you got the Holy Ghost... He'll show you some things that you can't learn in a book. He'll lead you around some traps that people have set for you. He'll get you away from people who are trying to deceive you with their speech. He'll let you know just by looking at that man that he ain't no good. Uh, he'll let you smell a rat before it dies. Yeah, that's, a, that's an old Louisiana colloquialism. Uh, you, you can smell a rat before it dies. 
because you have discernment. You got mother wit. You got good sense that did not come from southern or grambling. But it comes from God. I said 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 it comes from God. You said I will keep him. I wish I had a Bible reading. In perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on me. He says, delight yourself in the Lord. Commit your ways to the Lord. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. He says, ask and it shall be given. I need one or two more Bible readers. Seek and you shall find. Knock on the door and the door shall be opened unto you. Jesus said, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And here's what I'll do for you. I will give you rest. You're going to help me close this, won't you? Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I hear people, I hear people complain all the time about how hard it is to be a Christian. And it is hard to be a Christian if you got one foot in the world and one foot in the church. But Jesus said, my yoke is easy. Have I got a witness? Because if you want to do what's right, he will send his Holy Spirit to enable you to do what's right so that when you come to church, it won't be a responsibility. It'll be a privilege. I wish I had somebody to help me. I'm not here this morning out of a sense of responsibility. I'm here this morning because it's a privilege. David said, I was glad when they said unto me. I need one or two more Bible readers. Let us go into the house of the Lord. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. You gonna help me, won't you? Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. Somebody here been sick and the Lord raised you up. Your help didn't come from the doctor. It did not come from CVS pharmacy. All healing comes from God. My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. He will not suffer even my foot to be moved. Behold, he that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. For the Lord is my keeper. That's where I'm trying to go. The Lord is the shade upon my right hand. The sun shall not smite me by day, nor the moon by night. For the Lord shall preserve me from all evil. I wish I had a Bible reader. He will preserve my going out and my coming in. Have I got a witness? When I wake up in the morning, he's my protection. When I go to bed at night, he sends an angel to stand by my house. Let no robber or burglar break in. All night. I wish I had somebody to help. And all day. I've got angels. Have I got a witness? Watching over me. God is keeping me when I sleep at night. When I don't know which way to turn. God is right there protecting me. When I can't decide how things are going to turn out. I've got a God on my side who's opening doors that were closed in my face. He'll make your enemies leave you alone. He'll give you a chance after you mess up. 
Is there anybody here got some mess ups in your past, but God forgave you and gave you another chance? Don't sit there and act like you made it by yourself. It was nobody but Jesus. Nobody but the Lord. He'll open doors that will close in your face. I need one more Bible reader to help me close right here. When David thought about how good God had been to him and how many ways God had made for him, David sat down and wrote Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. You're going to help me say it, won't you? He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I wish I had a witness here. Yea, though, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Come on, you can help me preach it. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup is just running over. Surely, I said surely, Surely, goodness and mercy shall keep on following me all the days of my life. Even when I try to go wrong, goodness and mercy. Even when I desire to do evil, goodness and mercy. Even when I don't want to do right, goodness and mercy. Even when I make a mistake, goodness and mercy. Even when I sin against God's will, goodness and mercy. Even when I do wrong and I know better, goodness and mercy. Is there anybody here thankful for goodness and mercy? If the Lord opened doors for you, help me praise his name. If the Lord made a way for you, why don't you grab somebody? Why don't you touch somebody? Tell them, surely, surely, goodness and mercy is following me all the days of my life. And when it's all over, I will dwell in the house of the Lord. That's why I'm getting in practice, shouting right now. Because after a while, by and by, in that great getting up morning, I'm going to see Jesus and I want to thank him for all he's done for me. Tell him thank you for opening doors for me. Thank you for saving my soul. Thank you for somewhere to sleep tonight. Thank you. I got food on my table. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know he's all right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When I see Jesus, I'm not going to tell him about my trouble. He already knows that. When I see Jesus, I won't bring up my enemies. He already knows that. When I see Jesus, I won't complain about my trials. He already knows that. But when I see Jesus, 
I'm going to fall down at his feet and tell him, thank you. Thank you. You brought me. You kept me. You saved me. I know he's all right. He's all right. I know it. I know he's all The Bible said, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. If you're walking right, it ain't because you're so holy. God is just ordering your steps. Those of us who have raised children, when you were teaching your children how to walk, you would, you would get on the side of them because they were toddling. They were about to fall at any minute. And you'd get beside them and, and guide them and hold them. And if they would start to fall as a parent, you'd pick them up again. And then you'd start them to walk in. And if they toddled to the other side, you'd pick them up again. That's what the Lord is doing with us. When I start to fall, he's right there to pick me up. When I start to go astray, he's right there to keep my paths straight. We're going to get to it in a minute, but the scripture says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will, yes, he will, keep your paths straight. He will direct your path. 